Hello and welcome to Thought Provoking Tech. I'm Zach and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you guys some thoughts on the overall experience as well as performance benchmarks for playing the competitive multiplayer mode of Call of Duty Black Ops 4. So guys, without further delay, let's go ahead and get right to it. Alright, so first things first, let's go ahead and cover the overall experience of playing Black Ops 4 multiplayer on Paper Space in conjunction with Parsec. And this is something I think that Parsec has really dialed in and has continued to offer a top-notch experience on the software side with a very low latency and highly responsive experience. I can't really have I don't really have any complaints about the this side of the experience. Everything seemed to play very well. Uh, always, everything always felt very responsive, and I can't say any of the kills and shots I missed were really due to the quality of the connection or you know latency involved in that. But this is something that's going to be pretty much highly your mileage might vary uh, because your connection and the vast majority of the latency is going to be due to the quality of your connection as well as your proximity to the data center uh, because most of the latency that you're going to experience is going to be due to the time it takes for your data to physically travel from your gaming computer or your computer or your phone whatever you're gaming on to the cloud gaming data center and from the data center back to your computer phone whatever so with that being said uh, this section is kind of your mileage may vary um, one thing i have been thinking about is rebuilding my gaming computer uh, interesting tidbit about that i actually haven't even fired up my gaming computer in about four months uh, so that kind of gives a testament to the quality of cloud gaming now is I feel completely comfortable playing cloud gaming all the time now. Uh, but I might rebuild it, um, kind of give it some upgrades. Uh, it's kind of getting a little old right now. One of the reasons why I'm highly interested in cloud gaming. But I, what I've been thinking about is possibly rebuilding that machine. And in games like Black Ops 4 multiplayer where it's highly competitive, uh, kind of benchmarking, when I'm benchmarking everything else for the video, I could also benchmark my kill death ratio and kind of record that and actually do a couple matches locally and benchmark that and give you guys a comparison to see if my kill death ratio really changed from playing online with paper space and parsec versus playing locally. So if you guys think that might be a, a cool tidbit, some cool data points, leave your thoughts in the comment section below that will have some added money that doesn't make a ton of sense to spend because I don't really game on my gaming desktop anymore. I usually use cloud gaming anymore with both Shadow as well as Paper Space and Parsec and every once in a while GeForce Now, uh, depending on if the game is available on it and a couple other factors. Uh, but anyways, I, dig I digress. I'm getting a little bit off topic. But if you guys think that would be interesting and would help you guys, uh, do leave that in the section below. It would cost a little bit of money, so I just don't want to do it willy-nilly. But if enough people think it's going to be interesting and would be useful, I definitely will do it for future videos. So with that being said, I think that covers experience the overall experience section of this video. So let's go ahead and jump to our benchmark graph that shows the average, minimum, and maximum FPS results for a series of matches on multiplayer. If you watched my Black Ops 4 zombie mode video on paper space, you will likely remember a weird uh, scenario that we encountered where the P5000 actually performed about the same as the P4000 or slightly worse. And that trend continues today on multiplayer. Uh, that kind of makes sense because it definitely seems to be something with the game engine for some reason. I don't know exactly what's going on. I can't really explain it. Uh, but the P4000 is definitely your better bet. It actually performs better on average slightly uh, within close enough margin. That's probably within the margin of error. Um, but it is much cheaper on an hourly rate. So you may as well play on the P4000. So with that being said, the P5000 did achieve a better max FPS, but I really don't cover that or talk about it too much. I do put it on the graph simply because it is something that is automatically captured with the benchmarking software, but it's usually just a spike and it's not something that's gonna be a sustained FPS. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to really focus on it. So with that being said, the average FPS definitely achieves our golden standard of 1080p at 60 FPS, which I am steadfast in is a good you know, benchmark to try to achieve with our current generation of cloud gaming and the current internet infrastructure out there, at least from those of us in the US. I know there are some countries that have better internet, faster internet, uh, especially smaller countries where it might be easier to get closer proximity to the data center. Uh, but at least right now, 1080p is a, at 60 FPS is a good uh, kind of goal line to try to get to and to achieve. And even on the highest quality settings, paper space does, did that very well with both the P4000 and the P5000 actually being with in a very close margin. 
and the minimal FPS side, they both achieved right around 46 FPS. So that's very good. You're not going to notice that dip too much. It's definitely not down into the 30s where it'd be more noticeable or even worse into the 20s where you definitely notice some stuttering going on. So that being said, you can see here why I felt that it was a good overall experience with using Parsec. Uh, and it just makes sense if you have a P4000 machine just to, there's no real reason to upgrade to the P5000 machine uh, because it's going to perform actually slightly worse on average. Uh, so, and it's going to cost more money at the same time. So at least with Black Ops 4, go for the P4000 and save a little bit of dough. So let's go ahead and move on to our results from about a two minute span of gameplay. As promised, here's our final benchmark that's showcasing a random two minute segment of gameplay. And here it actually looks like the P5000 is actually performing better. It is just a random two minute segment of gameplay, so I could have been in a more intense uh, gunfight or something in the P4000 example here. Uh, but the previous graph doesn't really show one aspect of gameplay, and that is the consistency of the experience. From here, you can see the P4000 actually seems to have a less consistent experience. We do know that the P5000 does dip to about the same point as the P4000, so it could just be the point of gameplay that I grabbed uh, to illustrate this graph. It's hard to really get a directly apples to apples comparison just because every game is so different. In multiplayer, you have different map maps that you might play on. The map that you're playing on might slightly impact your performance. Uh, you might have more action going on on one map than another. Some maps are a little bit bigger, so you might not have as many players uh, in a certain area at once. So there's a lot that goes on, and that really shows why I actually take three different, you know, like for multiplayer games, I actually take three different multiplayer matches and a benchmark from those and average those on the previous benchmark that I always show just to get a nice average and so that we don't have like a weird outlier game that throws everything out. Uh, and you know gives you kind of a false idea of the performance you should be able to expect. So with these two benchmarks, I do feel that with you should have a good information and a good understanding of what you should be able to expect with Parsec and Paperspace. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big like. I do greatly appreciate all the support I get from everybody in the YouTube community. Uh, it definitely does mean a lot to me. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, make sure to smash that subscribe button and stay tuned for more great videos from Top of Open Tech.